So we join back in with our adventurers. Now I've actually been pondering this one. Uh, uh, are we calling us Chaotic Embers or is that just the racer name? I feel like that's just the racer name for now. Okay. For now, I like, for let's now. see if it once, once the race is over, if if it sticks, it sticks. Oh, yeah. uh, as as yeah. our maybe the Chaotic Embers have been uh, going about the first few days of the festival, uh, uh, as we saw last week, uh, Volu was having to overcome some of their lasting effects from the weaving contest. And after... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that I was didn't... lasting effects from the weaving? This from the weaving why contest. I to tell no, no. Uh, <laughs> what you're seeing right here, folks, is that Beecher genuinely has no clue what happened last week. Um, <laughs> So that will be fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, however, uh, after collapsing, Volu <laughs> was rushed uh, to the temple of Astera, and Dante made some interesting discoveries. We now, however, zoom back in time. <laughs> To the beginning of the day, as the group were splitting off from Ichi, so Ichi, you just summoned your elk, you'd, you'd gone down to the market with them, uh, you'd seen the stage area and like all of the stuff that's being set up, and then you'd broken off uh, and riding on your elk. You're going like full pace, full speed, um, like, or, I'm or not, is not, it leisurely? Not like dashing, just like going at full regular movement speed without like exerting. Okay, so, and I'm also going to ask for, I'm going to say survival, uh, because this is more, you you don't actually know where the race starts. You know yeah. that, it, you know, it's on the edge of the, uh, the city, you know, that there's almost like the drive of the, the vehicles mm -hmm. through parading, and then they sort of line up in the position. Yeah. Uh, um, 22, 16 plus six. Okay. So as you... You easily make your way through through the crucible and to the outer edges. Uh, you notice the the sort of the buildings becoming slightly more densely packed. Uh, uh, still not massively compared to some places, um, but almost you're seeing more of the effects of the desert now that the proximity as you're starting to come out to it. The, the, there is less greenery. The greenery that is there is more. Uh, you can tell it's kept. It, you know somebody definitely like maintains that bit of greenery that, that sits there. Um, but you are now starting to get into that rocky gray slate like uh, desert. Um, and as you move out onto the edge, you do manage to spot an area that you think has actually been widened. And, and you can sort of tell that the, the sort of rocks that you're seeing are like uh, almost fresher. Uh, as if, like, you know, there's not been any dust or wear on them previously. They've almost pushed back, and there's, uh, you know, those sort of slight mounds towards the edge where you think this is potentially where they've widened it for the all the vehicles to be able to fit in mm -hmm. next to each other as a starting line. Um, I'll say that that can prevail for your following. Um, so I know when we last talked, you were saying that you were maybe going to go just to the crevasse. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if that's still the plan. Uh, I would like to start off by what comes first, the crevasse or the ascent? The crevasse. So it goes, the, the, the plane's out to the crevasse, you then go down into the crevasse, and then you make, after, uh, at the end of, uh, of that stretch, uh, you make the, the ascent and then back down uh, to join um, to join the city. Okay. From doing like preliminary, just going up to the crevasse, do I see anyone else on the track at all? Anyone else scouting so, out? The first thing you would note is it looks to be about a. Um, and let me actually check this to be sure that I am not telling you fibs. You'd never tell us fibs, would you? No, but I do omit truths. Um, you know that you can tell that it is about a 600 foot like stretch of open desert 
uh, the, and you can see at the very end, there is this muck, like it closes down. Um, so, and actually, uh, and if you didn't know you could do this, guys, if you're using Roll20, you can grab individual players uh, by their nameplate at the bottom and move them onto individual maps. Um, very cool little feature. I enjoy it. Um, so each you should now be able to see um, what is the basic, basic layout. Um, yeah. I did explain uh to the guys last week um it will be a basic track layout but there will be uh, i'm gonna uh, th there'll be uh blocks of color and such that show obstacles or closings so you can tell that the track stays about the same width most of the way down but right at the end it closes down to a 20 foot gap okay. so yeah it's very quickly that's really cool that Ichi can see the map and we can't. But that also means I can't show it on OBS just yeah, in that's, case. That, that's fine. I that's don't know. Fine. I don't know because we're still just, it's more just for yeah. uh, Beach of reference. Yeah, no, that, that. I just, so that you're aware. That's, that's good. Um, so this bit here would close down. One second. My computer's being slow as fuck right now. Come on. Show me the race. Stop having a grabby hand. There's no, no, I'm not grabbing anything. Um, so as you can see, uh, you can see that this, there's this large open stretch of desert that stays about the same width. And again, you're seeing signs of where uh, somebody has definitely come along and probably using magic has like pushed it back so it stays the same width up this initial stretch. You can tell, uh, obviously, this is the main portion that the people can actually see. Mm -hmm. um, that you know that they have talked about uh, scrying eyes at points and that, you know, there's going to be commentators and all those sorts of things. Um, and you're imagining with the, the speed of this, uh, as even as you're riding it, it shouldn't be too long of a, of a, of a lap, essentially. Um, obviously, for, for ourselves, mechanically in combat rounds, um, it feels longer. But the actual fact of it is probably, you know, two, three minutes, maybe maybe four. If, if the complications arise. Um, but this is the main stretch that people can see. So you can see that they've sort of cleared it to really demonstrate some of the speed. You can tell this is going to be a point that people really put the foot down. Yeah. Um, however, the blocks, uh, you can see that the the pathway or the, the racetrack sort of leads up to the, the mountainside and hits a 20 foot wide entrance that then dips out of sight. Anyway. So you um give me an um, yeah it's gonna have to be uh if you're looking what 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 are you looking for as you're coming up this initial stretch uh you can run me just a perception generally um I'm but if mainly you're looking, I'm for looking anything for... specific then you will need to investigate yeah not not anything specific on the track it is more perception like I'm doing a scan for if there are any other people. Kind of doing what I'm doing, like scouting the track, perhaps people who are like searching or starting to influence. Uh, 17 plus 6, so that is a 23. Okay, so you make your way up and slow the ride of your elk a little bit as you start to scan the ground and the area. You, you, you do notice a figure way out, like a good hundred, maybe two hundred foot out into the desert, and they don't seem like they're approaching you. They seem like they're they're on the road. Um, at this distance, they look quite big, but other than that, yeah. And I would say that you can tell they're armored. They're almost their shape is too boxy. You know, the silhouette of them in the distance is is boxier than it should be. Um, so, but that that is it. Like nobody on this track, it's it, like you, you you would just pick them out with that roll. Um, you're not really seeing okay. um i would say that obviously you're looking through and there are sort of and you would gather that you would have to get a closer look the reason it's hard for you to pick out uh almost interference with just a perception is there's loads but it's the magical clearing that they've done as well so to sort of determine between oh that was a purposeful mound of dirt that's been pushed to the side or is that covering something uh, you, you'd you have to sort of get down and actually 
take a look. But you are seeing that this whole stretch has been interfered with from the natural order, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to leave this first bit of stretch as it's mainly the bit of where people see, and I'm going to head into the crevasse. Okay, so as you get to the crevasse, it basically makes an immediate dip into a fairly steep uh, dive. And what you do notice pretty quickly, um, as you sort of, you almost stop at the top and take a look in. It takes a, a steep dive, but then it's almost like it joins the main uh, uh, stream that runs through uh, this stretch of mountains and then follow like you can see it sort of like you notice they're not lights but it's almost like gatherings of uh, plants and the thing that makes you sort of notice them uh, as not just plants is they have like flower pots um, but they are glowing almost uh, almost co you know like the um, cotton not cotton uh, the ones that you blow and they like dandelions, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, dandelions. The dandelions when they sort of turned into that seeding uh, stage. There's it. There's just like these puff balls that are glowing, and sort of you can pick out the track as again you sort of scan up the way, and you can see um, a again another roughly six six maybe maybe just under six hundred feet. Um, before you can then see almost like at this distance, it just looks like a wall. And then you sort of with the with the 24 straining, you can pick out the, the sort of zigzagging because uh, at this sort of plane, it's hard for you to pick out uh, the, the dimensions of it. Um, and up at the top, and you're only sort of picking this out by the light, is there's like a beam of light that clearly exits out. Uh, out of the mountainside again. Okay. Um. Uh, with that 24, you would quickly notice, so firstly, your elk doesn't hesitate like they they get cautious. And you take a look around and you're noticing a lot of uh, what looks to be like uh, bat feces or something along that lines. There's like a, a, on your right hand, uh, right hand side at the bottom, there's like, covered in like white and black ichor ic that's all over the stalactites um and, and around that area uh taking a glance up you can't see them it doesn't it looks like either they've maybe they've been spooked by something else or whatever but definitely bats have been using this cave system mm -hmm. um Making your way further down, you would be able to actually join. Before, before I get up. too further down, uh, each is going to go over to where, first of all, where the like bat droppings kind of are. Like, obviously, it's mainly like sticking to the stalactites, but where it kind of like comes to a point and like drops off, each is going to kind of go, like, use their kind of like sword to kind of like shift it, shift like a, a small section of bat feces away mm -hmm. gonna get a torch light that and i'm gonna put that on it to see if it lights like if bat feces is flammable uh you were checking it it doesn't seem to be however upon being this close do you want to make me yeah. uh, a nature or a survival i would also accept nature um, is if you're actually trying to identify survival is more like there are certain things a survivalist could get, get gather from feces, like how mm -hmm. long ago it was here and maybe how big it is and those sorts of what, you know, what sort of things it eats. But I'll uh, go with if you survival. Want, if you want more info, creature, it's nature. I'll go survival, get more like the applications of certain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, eight plus six, so 14. Okay, so there's... <sighs> You would pick up. It's hard to tell how long ago they were here. There, there's definitely no heat in it. But also, as you sort of getting down to this bottom bottom layer, it's colder down here. Just generally, uh, you can you know the streams rushing uh, rushing through, and almost as you can feel the splashes occasionally, and it is cold. Um, so there's almost like that a sense of uh, you know, is it 
old or is it just cold down here? Yeah. But what you definitely do determine is that whatever made this, and you do think it, it does sort of evidence bat, but it's definitely bigger than your average bat. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'll keep that nugget. Um, thinking of the Aether Stream and Cinder Smoke, well, yeah, the, the Aether Stream vehicles, I know they operate off due to my previous mistakes of thinking ahead. Uh, I know they obviously work off of a Levitate spell. Mm -hmm. The way that Levitate spell works, is it like they will float three feet above the ground so it's between five to ten five and, to ten yeah and you can you so you've seen like some of the skateboarders and you haven't seen any one in a vehicle do it and yeah. um, although you would have sort of seen it demonstrated with the platforms um if you uh like if you are at five foot and then you drive over something that is very close to the plate yeah it throws you upwards it will go up and if you can control uh, that, that you've seen the skateboarders where they'll come up onto a curb and then jump away from the curb as it pulses to yeah. sort of give them then a 10 foot rise before they lie, land and keep going. You obviously haven't seen any of the, all the vehicles you've seen are very clunky and. Yeah, it's harder to get. Yeah. Whereas you missed. have seen the platforms at times, they'll sort of bring it up onto the, onto a railing and it levitates it around yeah. the corner for a second, but it's, that's a controlled, they it's bring, nice. they bring it up. Um, and the transition from the straight into the into the slight decline into the crevasse the cave i'm guessing is slightly circular yes it, it almost uh, almost overly uh, shaped um and actually you would notice um and uh, something for you to keynote as you sort of look over the path it looks straight down. If you join it slowly and sort of make your way down, it looks like a fairly straight, but it isn't. And you think that if you take that top section too quickly, mm -hmm. where you would land at the bottom is actually in the stalactites to your right. Yeah. Okay. So, so it's, you know what I mean? Like it's almost yeah. just 10 foot to the left. Like at, the, at the, the direction slowly curves a bit. So very, if very you were slowly. to take that straight trajectory, you would end up, yeah okay and, you could, and, and there is what you can definitely see like okay if we jumped and we were already ready for this you could land it right you could yeah. also looking at that if you took it with enough speed you could land straight in the in the central river section so you know that if the if it's hit fast enough you won't you will, won't risk the stalactites but also if there's uh if you if you just jump it you're gonna end up off the track potentially and while obviously interestingly uh you don't know how stalactites interfere or react with a uh crystal because all the times you've seen them do the bump up thing they've moved the crystal over the object so there's a level of if a stalactite is five foot but the pin of the stalactite isn't on the the levitate plate you might skate down it as the as it tries to join the ground. It, it could know? penetrate the armor rather than affect where the crystal is. Yeah, or even at least cause damage or throw them off balance. It, you you don't think it would be a nice landing even for a skilled driver that's not going to crash from it. Okay, let me. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, fully, fully make some notes. It's fine. Um, cool. So da 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 da. You would also see that the track for this section thins to about half. So about half of the width of the previous um, road. Right about now. Sorry, uh, what was no, no, that no. about? Uh, sorry, go on. Uh, what was that? Um, the about? the the road and track for this section, and it seems to be the the pathway down and the river way up is about half the width of the previous road. You you won't know exactly without like you know measuring as as such, but it, it yeah. you can tell it 
chunks in either side, obviously. Um, Wonderful. You would also see all this area is a lot more littered with stalactites and other style obstacles. It doesn't look purposefully placed, but just naturally uh, this area has some, you know, there's boulders that have fallen over that side and there's more obstacles generally on the on the path uh, down here. Um, and wonderful uh, yes a little bit of interference then ichi is going to make is at that lip where we go from straight to slight curve down mm -hmm. on the about there's going to be about 20 foot in the center that Ichi's going to leave as is mm -hmm. and then the rest either side where it kind of like gets towards the edges and where the ring, the outer ring of the cave starts to form and where it starts to funnel more. Mm -hmm. Ichi is going to use their burrowing to start shifting dirt up, making it so rather than it being forwards and down, it's a forwards ever so slight lift and Almost then down. Like a little, like a little ramp. I'm, I'm adding a ramp so there is a risk if the races are too far to the side, the elevation they will get from the ground could send them into the... Yeah. curving roof okay so you actually want it before the entrance yeah so like as it kind of goes okay in... so almost on the on the the bit that we're on now if i draw a little thing because obviously yeah. the 20 foot gap is basically the entrance yeah uh so if you want to ping how far back from the entrance you want to make this little so so this entrance so oh, the blue my... the blue on the on the right that's is the, the, the cave wall that's the yeah that's the entrance to the crevasse um okay good good so in that case the center 15 feet i will leave as is okay and that the like 10 13 feet either side i will curve so that okay. it's it's a uh, i can relay to my team we need to be precisely in the center and we will have no nothing affect us anyone else who's slightly off could tip could fly into the wall you want 20 between yeah 20 between so that then there's that slight but to be fair in which case my my side walls are on as well because they need to be there as well basically you're leaving a per uh, you're making the actual people are gonna and, and that's what i wanted to ask so how far to the left do you want to put it is that fine or because essentially you're you're extending mm -hmm. the the choke point yes because if you don't choke earlier you're gonna hit any side any ramps. last minute chokes is going to either flip or yeah, adjust good. their trajectory enough that could run them into the wall into another racer yeah um, um yeah so that that kind of looks good to me okay um wonderful wonderful and I, will, cool. I will put a little little thing here that just says ramp. Just so I remember. Um, are you gonna try? Obviously, there's a level of it being hidden because of the natural ground. Mm -hmm. Are you wanting to try and hide it further? I'm not of. I'm not worried too much about this being mega noticeable, purely because of the high speed people are going at. yeah yeah no this this should be all right because obviously what the vehicles are approximately like five to ten feet in width uh, some some 15. on the far left there's the examples of them yeah there's yeah that's what i'm looking at so we we mainly stick between 15 feet wide to five feet wide like the narrow races and then the wide races mm -hmm. so that being as it is and obviously their traject their acceleration being a lot higher that should be fine because it's just mm -hmm. it's just late enough that anyone who makes that who thinks oh i can clear that yeah i'll try to won't. put someone off from the outside yeah any anyone who's racing risky will regret it basically mm. okay um, um anything else to this area are we going to this area no there? to this area no that's the kind of as this is the main straight I want people to think they're safe and just gun it 
and then get to that choke point. Obviously, we're going to be left in the dust, and that's fine at this point because I want to create as much hell for them in the front as we can because we can we can avoid crashed vehicles easily. We've got more maneuverability. Mm. It's those who are going to be gunning it that we want to punish, okay, so. punish for their hubris. Okay, yeah, for sure. Um, okay, so you make your way um... into the crevasse. Mm-hmm. Um... So you make your way down and further into the crevasse. You would find that it sort of, like I said, it levels out at levels the, out. where the stream is um, and begins to make its way down in between the mountains. For this, it stays fairly linearly. Um, like I said, that about that half. Let me actually give you a distance so that I can... Because um, the first section is roughly 150 wide. Mm-hmm. So it'd be about well, 70. 150 fucking choking to like 20 feet is insane. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, to be honest, there's going to be a level of like, and you would know tracking this. Um, I'm I'm like, Ichi has a notebook and is plotting be center here. Like, yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the, that is a, the, the other potential problem and the reason they've set it up there where everyone can see is actually this open stretch of road is going to be dangerous from atta- for attacks between players. There's a mm-hmm. lot of open space and actually each, of it, each as you're looking, if you were in the lead, you could easily, with the right range and the right spell, hit hit people at the back or hit yeah. people that are like making a move and, and cause crashes and there's a very large area of openness here. As it moves into the crevasse, it moves down to like 70, 75 wide. Um, but it almost more zigzags. Yeah, so I was going to say, a little bit serpentine. Mm, so there are areas on the fringes of the race. So if you're in the center, you can almost see all the way up. But if you're like on the right, you can't see some of the sections that are up the right hand side, but you get a view to the left. And there's almost like that crisscrossing as you you make your way up. So you think there's potentially um there's potential in this stretch for hiding things. There's mm-hmm. lots of it in the areas off the side, it's lots of stalactites, uh crumbled rocks and such. There's lots of areas for for that sort of stuff. Um, but you also think potentially um almost like the potential to move out from cover if you were you know if you're being attacked by again in that situation that the front guy is just pinging bullets back there's there's potential to actually take cover in these sections uh at the sacrifice potentially of going forwards faster but obviously again and and actually in here you are thinking there's a lot of room for your grapples because it is uh-huh. either side is almost like straight up cliff face yeah. um so there's definitely some potential here for like swinging around the spots and moving. Uh, you even see some areas where uh, the stalactites have been crushed and there's potential for like going straight across. Yeah. Um, again, you know that you're going <laughs> to lose speed with the like, but if you've got the grapple and the winch and such, there's potential there. Um, <clears throat> you do notice as you're moving through here that there are a number of caves and, and other offshoots but they haven't been highlighted with the like glowing plants uh, as these ones have and they're just dark tunnels that lead off into different areas of of the uh, mountainside and um, you do know Ichi that the you would have been told that uh, so obviously the law behind why Zikar grow uh appears in this mountain I always want to say grows does it all grow or is it all grows it like it grows and forms like that's yeah. it um but uh, basically, the, the law around why Zikar is grown here is that it's almost the after effects of uh, Larixa. This is the site around, well, above the mountains is where she cast her spell uh, to seal the energies. Um, and almost the, the backlash sort of sent shockwaves of magical energy through um, the mountainside. And it is said that all of the tunnels that you can move through have been created by the streams of magic that carved their way through um, the mountain itself. Um, even this, uh, you and being in the center is kind of surreal. So you, this stream runs almost perfectly down the center of the, the, the mountain. And you can at points look straight up and see sky. 
um, just, you know, thousands of feet up in the air. Um, you know that this level is below ground level. Um, but obviously, like I said, you can see that way, way up there, there are the, the pockets mm -hmm. of light. Um, you get the, your way through that and finally find your way to the ascent that you sort of reach the base and it begins with like a sharp right turn. So it's not like you don't join the zigzag nicely. It's like you join the center and have to div div it immediately to join uh, the 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 zigzag or face plowing straight into the the side, and then it does for again another six hundred or so feet, and uh, it zigzags the turns are every fifty feet or so. So the first one is like twenty five foot. And then after that, it's 50, 50, 50, 50, 50. You know that, again, and as you're looking, this has been carved with magic. Um, and you think, again, that's that purposeful. You can't just blast it up these. Um, or you would have to be an extremely skilled driver to do so. Um, mm -hmm. The turns are almost 180. So they're almost full turning back on yourself. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that that continues uh, for the stretch. Again, as you're looking up this area, you think that the potential pitfalls that are natural, and again, you're not actually noticing any interference so far from any others. Um, obviously, you haven't gone like digging, digging, but like you're not seeing any obvious or anything laid out or just very, very clear. Um, but you think the potential pitfall here is that actually, whether purposeful or not, there are the the magic has pulled the ground almost outwards. Mm -hmm. So at points, the very edges of the, the zigzag shelf uh, could crumble away if um, struck. You, again, because there's no weight from the vehicles, you're driving over, it won't cause any issues, but you're actually seeing points where actually you're thinking, okay, if we like hit that, like, you know, with like a spell or maybe with the ballista, you know, with something, you yeah. can actually knock a chunk of the ground out. And then that'll take and away. Again, what... yeah, that, and that takes away what supports the levitate and they should just slide back down to the next level. Like it's not like a, you don't see, foresee it being like a down the cliff side, but it would have them facing the wrong way on the next They'd level. they have to down. turn around and go again. Yeah. Um, so there are some potentials for that. Um but there's no, uh, like I said, this is that you can tell the the main obstacle here is the fact that is the the zigzagging uh, pathway. Yeah. Um, to aid with the zigzagging, where those like like one seventy degree turns are on the innermost corner, because obviously like it's going up. And then where it comes back, it's almost it's basically like that. So there's this brief moment where there's elevation mm -hmm. next to us. Each is going to again with their burrowing, like create what rock climbers would kind of use as like a scoop hold, like a a basin hold. But for us, it's going to be a a carve out in so that we can shoot in from this angle and ride that all the way around rather than having to prematurely disconnect and okay. have to write ourselves. I'm going to give us making you nice little bolt holes for the yeah, rocks. basically. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Nice and easy enough to do. Can you give me um sleight of hand? If you've got it straight dexterity, if you don't, um, <laughs> Oh, well, Hey, and I did Uh 15 minus one to 14. Okay. So, you manage to be careful enough and actually at first you sort of when you dig you the first uh like claw in again this you can tell the stability of this isn't great and you almost having to be a little bit careful with the digging so as not to just dislodge that it's section like of sandstone kind of vibe yeah and if you crunch your way wrong um also that gives you an indication and an extra little clue that uh, this isn't, while it will work, there is potential as you make this climb that the grapples don't, like it's brittle. So the grapple might go it in might and actually out. just pull, well, it, or it might just pull the whole, the, the rock, like the rock might just crumble away or okay. um, you, 
However, with uh, with the sort of I'm going to sort of say because you could, you've you've been around the the deserts and you've done the burrowing, you see a number of stalactites that are off to the side uh, and stalagmites that are from the uh, up above that weren't part of the magical crafting process, but they are. You're muted. Sorry. Tights. No, oh, tights go up to the ground. Tights. No, tights stalag stalag tights holds tight, oh, and stalag mites. I was thinking about tights up. Yeah, it's all good. Um, either way, uh, but basically there are sections at the turns, so not on the straights, but where they turn, where it meets the the rock that they've manipulated. That there is unmanipulated, actual con like solid rock. Yeah. Um, so I'll say that you can obviously note that and sort of, uh, you would know, like, it's not going to, like, obviously I won't tell you the mechanics of it, but basically it is in this section going to be riskier to use your grapple in the middle portions of the the ramps up. Um, but you should be pretty safe to use them on the corners. And obviously that is where you've dug your, your swing round uh, areas anyway yeah um but it is uh worth remembering for for the actual time of racing and eventually you would i mean are, are you making your way the uh, uh, mm, interesting actually i think uh, of all knowing this you actually don't think the elk can go up this Oh, this is made to be levitated on. It's not made to actually take structural. So Ichi can walk on it and it's yeah. it's, it's about OK. You think a per it could take a person's weight, but you don't think this would take a beast of burden or like a cart or anything like that. OK, good to know. Because again, will... like, like the, the wizards that have made it know that it just needs to provide a surface to for the levitate to repel off almost. Yeah. Okay, I, I will dismount my elk and kind of like leave them there for a second while I make my way up. Okay, so you eventually make your way um, all the way up. And as you make your way to the top, the, the final turn turns into the final uh, like 50 foot stretch and you can see this like beam of tunnel light. Um, as you've made your way up, uh, the pathway that's got the firstly the zigzagging up pathway is about 50 foot wide um and as it hits this uh 50 the, uh, and the opening in the mountainside stays that 50 foot wide but as you get to it it is just a shelf and you stand out and you look out over uh and essentially as, as I, i'll bring you back on to um the main map um you are up here in on the uh, on, almost uh up the first slope of the peak that meets the crucible um however from up here you're looking down um give me a perception Ooh, that's good. Uh, nine. Okay, you look out over the city. Everything looks good. You sort of glance over to the area. Uh, I mean, there's loads of crowds there. You would you you quite surprised that like it looks quite like lively and energetic. You like almost like an actual concert rather than like a a weaving contest. Yeah, it, it may be surprised for a moment, but. Uh, uh, weavers are the true rock stars. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and apparently so, because that crowd is moving. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah. Uh, but as you look out over, you don't actually, what sort of brings your attention away from that is you don't see any pathway down from here. Yeah. So just a shelf drop off and then... Mm -hmm. 
The, and, and you can see uh, a, a wide main road that you know is the final stretch. But it's like, if you imagine again, you're up on this ping on the uh, where the upper this section of slope, yeah. and it's just down here in the main street. There's nothing that actually joins it up. However, I would say that your prevailing perceptions, you are again noticing magical interference, like they've manipulated this to look like this. Mm -hmm. um, and as you sort of begin to like approach the edge, five foot before the edge, you actually meet a wall of force. Now, Ichi, you're like, as much as it, you, we can go down the route of somebody's put this here so everyone crashes, you don't think it's that. You actually think they're going to, like, there's something they're going to do here. And they're like, they've just either not done it yet or it's going to be revealed or... This is the in construction sign. <laughs> Essentially, it just stops anybody that were, that might be wandering the track as you're such yourself, yeah. uh, stepping straight off. Um... Uh. And obviously, you haven't uh, you haven't take the, taken the official tour. While the guys have signed your team up, and you are now eligible for an official tour, um, they wanted to wait for your return um so you haven't officially had anything explained to you you know it goes down to the crevasse up the mountain and down back to the city but yeah. other than like the intricacies of it um and you've been to these things you know you've been to the combat days in the past they always have surprise you know they'll unveil something and yeah okay currently it's just like alluding to what could be just gun it and go for a jump Mm. Oh my god. Um but I would say you could definitely tell just from the magical editing that has been done that this it, it looks like whatever comes out from here is going to stay about 50 foot wide. Okay. From my walk through the crevasse, were there any more like upper cave bits or like holes? Obviously, I know that you said that there are moments where you could look up, but where like these giant bats or what these larger than normal average bats mm. could be like nesting? You're not seeing anything. Um, give me actually running the survival, you reckon that they definitely absconded this area when, around uh, the time wizards were just like oh, yeah. moving sections of earth and like you know just making the track as they wanted it um you imagine if they are and they so would so maybe give you an indication that they probably are some while big maybe some sort of normal animal as a, as opposed to you know a, an aberration or any other sort of thing that you would need to watch out for um is the fact that they have cleared off you think you they're probably further down the mountainside and, and probably might rotate back this way but um it, it doesn't seem like they're here now well i'm not sure if there's anything i can do right now due to like the wall of force going forwards and such so i think he's just gonna be happy with the like slight adjustments they've made to give us as much of an edge and start heading back to the to the group okay so you make your way um down uh, it's maybe been just because and as much as obviously that the, the time the time for it's always weird i find this like the bits of dnd that are short are long for us and the bits yeah. that are short long. for us are like are long. really long um so it will have taken you a good few hours with oh yeah i've been i've been around, walking and been digging, and digging. And the, it, it's a good maybe two and a half and then by the time you get back you know that and, and obviously you need to go back down the track Mm -hmm. um, so by the time you sort of made your way back down, you go walking through the crevasse and back up. And as you exit the crevasse entrance, it's maybe about midday. Um, 
and I would just know, but maybe about eleven ish. But it looks it looks like it's coming to around that time. Yeah. And your attention would immediately uh, be uh, dragged uh, out towards the desert as you feel a large rumble in the ground as the earth begins to move and shake, and you take. Um, a, a, look, a look outwards and can actually see uh, some sort of large, weird blobish like creature, almost like or, uh, the same way a jet ski skims the water, like they're, they're across the top of the, the earth. They're moving erratically and give me a perception as you sort of look over uh, this, this scene. 21. Okay, so six. as as it's sort of, so as it's sort of passing, you sort of get in the silhouette from uh, no, sun is uh, directly more directly above you. So you're sort of seeing this creature in the distance. It's maybe about a hundred foot away from you, um, and for a second you you're looking and you're sort of looking closer and closer, and then a bright light makes you like, oh, geez. And as you look back, there is uh, somebody atop it, like striking at it and you can see these flashes of of like of like uh, divine energy um you would recognize the energy you are trained to use yeah um as you're hey. watching um you would see there's there's almost like a final and the all together the mound of stuff just into the into the uh, slate and gravel and just stops moving. Ichi will like, like at the elk and start. We'll just go into like a sudden burst and dash over. Okay, so as you are approaching, um, you would be able to hear um the sounds. Wait, that you would be able to hear the sounds of like that that not like grunting in pain but the grunting of exertion of somebody getting themselves up as you're approaching this mound of a creature give me a um religion as you get closer uh to, to this religion also rolled a 15 again and religion is plus zero so 15 Okay, so you would, you've never seen one in person, but you were taught about them. Around the time that you were looking into uh, fire plane uh, creatures, um, I can't remember what I put some time. Around the time you were looking into the, the fire creatures, you also looked into creatures from the other planes, uh, especially the elemental ones, as uh, your uh, Bruce often told you that um, many of the aligned planes can be complicated as they are, they often aren't as, uh, as simple. They have the means and motives and emotions, and it tends to be more of a, uh take it as you see it and figure out what the best move is they do warn however that the elemental uh planes while they still have these creatures uh often have beasts made of fire and uh other things that will just act like a wild animal and should be you know captured and re-released if possible but often at times though uh, he, he they bruce would have explained that often at those times those creatures are here confused scared and you don't always it oh it, it be, always becomes a choice of do i need to stop it before it hurts things uh that was always the the standard run for for, for you and bruce that you know if we're in the middle of a city and it's you know burning down houses even if it's just trying to escape we need to stop it and whether that's knocking it out you would also have been taught that for a lot of those creatures, upon dying in our plane, they return back to their own. Mm -hmm. um, so it's often not seen as killing. In in and that, again, Bruce would have taught you that there are circumstances in which that isn't the case. You would have been taught that there are fey creatures that are native to you. Again, there are many planar creatures that came through centuries, you know, ago. Uh, and um and like millennia ago even and are now native of this plane and again that's something that 
Bruce has sort of taught you the different signs to that. Uh, a Fayborn of this plane might still have the whimsical nature and the feel, but doesn't always have the air of chaos magic that some of the Fey, uh, Feywildborn um, do. So there's you you've always been taught to like look for these signs, and if it's it's very and but after that, very much as the uh, as much of your order, if it is deemed that they are summoned here or they are here in a way that 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 it is not killing, it is banishing. It is seen as a banishment to destroy their material plane body, um, okay. and, and to send them back. Um, as you begin to approach, um, <clears throat> the creature does begin to sort of dissolve into sand and like blowing and wisping away. Um, and you see standing up. And I do, I do need a moment, sorry, because I can't even remember where I put this specific note. <laughs> yes, I found it. No, no, sorry. So you see, um, Standing before you is a large Goliath, um, armoured in full plate, only missing uh, the helmet, uh, standing nearly uh, nearly about seven and a half feet tall and with uh, tattoos and markings that you recognise as one of, you don't recognise specifically which, but it's the stylings of the tribes out in the, in the far west. Uh, so on the far side of the Xanagayath Desert, mm -hmm. um, dressed in plate armor and uh, uh, bearing a shield and wielding a, a longsword. Um, you see as they stand, um, give me a perception as you definitely recognize uh, a member of your uh, order um, and they... Initially, as the creatures dissolving between you, they initially sort of look, but you you would notice as a fighter, like their body tenses for a second, as like, wait a minute, and then and then as they their eyes flick over you, they relax again and say, uh, "Well, what are you doing out here, uh, Squire? I did not send for help." Uh, I got a dirty twenty on my roll. Um. No, um, I wasn't sent to help. I'm on my own journey. Sorry, um, is everything okay here? No, uh, so, yeah. Sorry, I thought maybe uh, I thought maybe the order had dispatched your master. You say you're on your own journey. Uh, uh, yes. One moment. Sorry. Uh, he stands up to full attention. So with the dirty twenty, you see that the armor is very well kept. Um, that saw all the weapons and such as you've have you been taught. Um, the armor is very much in the same style as what you wear. Um, one thing that would um, and and I'll leave it to you. So, so what what you think of it in terms of what each believes of it. But so the symbol that you see on the chest and the shield is that eye symbol that that you've pre. It's almost that embossed uh, eye. However, whereas yours is the sort of embossed block style eye, theirs, all of the edges stretch out into almost like beams of light em emitting from the eyes. So if you imagine it like the, the tops and bottoms is these stretching, um, and you can see that on the breastplate, they have been colored gold so that it literally looks like golden beams of light shooting from that central eye. Um, they <laughs> sheathe their sword and uh, greet in the proper fashion as they say, I am Ar uh, Sir Arthur, Arthur Grant. Jesus. I am Sir Arthur Grant. So that is A-R-T-U-R. Um, A-R-T-U-R. And then G Grant is G-A-R-R-A-N-T. I... Uh, I do not recognize you as your, uh, is it, I, I'm confused. Uh, you, normally you're, you would be with your master. Well, 
Um, yes, sorry. Um, I am Ichi. Uh, Ichi River. Oh, God, what, uh, what's my... <sighs> Need to so pronounce you, it no one can say names to that. Ichi Riava. Yeah. There we go. Uh, I am Ichi Riava. Um, my master was sadly slain, but they... Um, with their like final moments, they quested me with completing their journey. I, they um... they do look uh, sad as you tell them, and they might might I ask what what they were called? Oh God, no! I, uh, I literally just had it open. Da, 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 um, my master was Sir Bruce Gallahorn. You would see a, a, a flicker of recognition, um, but also roll me an insight as you see that recognition. The oh, other no. thing you would notice as you're sort of looking over them and you see that oh, they they almost like, um, you know, almost like uh, in exasperation, they roll their head backwards and they, they sigh deeply of like, uh, you know, you can, and you can tell that it's not necessarily that they're grieving because they really really knew him it's almost just like another brother like that sort of yeah um and they definitely recognized him what was your 13 10 plus 3 you only pick up the recognition uh so you can tell that they definitely know the name and then like i said they sort of roll their head back and uh, they they sort of uh almost like curse under their breath however with that 20 that you saw earlier you can see deep uh black veins sort of almost it's giving you the impression of like poison or infection that is running up the neck and up to the side of the ear uh they don't don't seem bothered or impeded but they just (sighs) i i have not seen bruce in a a long time i was an a squire myself when i last encountered him it was it was said he had left left for his own quest this quest met him with a fateful end then i'm sorry so he left this like where that this guy knows him from to go on his own quest is that that's what what, that's what he's been told he says so the last time that uh arthur saw bruce uh arthur was a squire um so and you would sort of know this uh bruce while you haven't met many others you had sort of been etiqueted on uh, or taught the etiquette of um how squires are supposed to act when two knights are interacting for example like you, it's very much you're not supposed to really you, you you watch and learn and and you know f- watch how they strategize and how they come up with things but you're not really supposed to like interject and uh you know say anything so yeah you imagine that this guy had no actual dealings with with Bruce but the last time they saw them at all um was when they were a squire I would say from your perception this guy looks maybe early 40s Okay. Um, so you're thinking potentially a good 20 years, 30 years since he was a squire. So it's a, go- a good chunk of time ago. Um, but yes, the last time, uh, is it the, yes, my my master at the time uh, told me that Bruce had left for his for his own quest. Many many of the, the order do. Uh, we, uh, this is not always as strong as it used to be, but I am sorry to to hear of you uh well um i i'm not sure of what personal quest they would have left on at the time that you last saw them but um they set up perhaps that quest was to um help establish a further connection of the order for um uh, he trains me in one of the subsections of the order that he developed he had his own section sadly um there weren't many who would uh, join the banner, but I did, and he he was a wonderful master and taught me many things about the Order, and hopefully one day I will also become a a full a full Iris Knight as well, but sadly, 
although he was very complimentary of my training, obviously never got to the point of uh, knighting me themselves. They're not. It's it's it can be very hard for a squire to complete their first task, and you know this in terms of uh, almost not. And it, again, it's not described to you as defeating your first monster, but completing your first actual uh, quest, as it were. Almost uh, your initial encounters with Dante were supposed to have been that. Um, yeah. Almost upon, you know, saving and you know solving the problem that the the, the fire creature was causing, um, that's when they were going to take you to yeah. anointment. Um, they they sit they take a seat on a nearby rock and you see they, they swing around their their backpack and they pull out uh, some rations and sort of offer you offer you some. Oh, um, thank you. Uh, I I wouldn't want to. Uh, taking rations for you. I do have some myself, but thank you for the offer. Yeah, you're welcome to to take a seat. How how have you been dealing since since your master left? And as he's talking, you would see he like reaches to the, the inside uh, of his of his armor and pulls forth a small bottle that's on a chain round his neck. Uncorks it and and takes a deep swig as you as you answer. Um, things have been going well. Um return to to this city uh to do a little bit of research myself and also to check in on a previous um a previous job that um that Bruce was assigned i figured um as i was in the area it was only right as a member of the order to check in on those who have needed our help before just to make sure that the issues that caused them to need us were still being maintained um Luckily, everything is is going well in the city in terms of that front. Um, they, they, and, and you sort of, as you look to them, you notice that they're smiling, and they, uh, at ease, squire. You, you do not need to fully explain. I mean, y- yourself. How, how are you dealing since since the? I'm not asking about your task or your mission. You, you lost a master. That can be hard. It's been strange, difficult. There are there are times when I have questions and no one to turn to to ask them, and that can be frustrating. But I suppose also help helping me develop in trying to figure them out myself, not jumping to any conclusions, but making sure they are well thought. But it was also difficult losing a friend. Bruce was a wonderful master uh, and a great mentor, but was also someone who I looked up to and held close. It, I suppose it's, and like Ichi kind of like really takes a moment. I don't think I've really stopped to think about that until you asked, honestly. They nod and they say, I don't mean to assume, but I take it that Bruce fell in during a mission. That they did. And that this last quest is dealing with the, the beast that caused the issue. Yes. Then I think you are on the right path. You have made it this far. Many squires do not even leave the area they they're in their own fort, forts, forts, as it were. I imagine that there are things that um, Ruth did not tell you. For uh, who how, how, did you? There's a lot. Most importantly, uh, how are you? Uh, are you uh, dealing with any signs of of the? Of... My brain is just going on. Uh, are you? Um, 
have you, uh, have you uh, dealt yet with any of the signs of the of the shadow? Um, I don't believe I'm familiar. You would see a flicker of like, like what? And then almost just like a, I would be surprised if Bruce would leave out such teachings, but uh, they roll back their sleeve and you now see that the veins that were on their neck have receded and seem to no longer be there. But along their arm there is uh like dark pulsing veins and i am um, i assume that uh Bruce told you of the devastation at fort auger does that ring a bell at all yes yeah, so you um you were told uh by your master that um so he told you that uh Right at the beginning, the order, the when he joined the order, things had been really, really great. In the beginning, the order had had a main fortress, Fort Auger, where the leading members, there were three voted in um, members known as the archivists, um, basically watched over the fort and directed the Irish knights in their path. Um, you were taught that back then that they they had powerful devices that would detect potential planar dangers and that they would almost direct and guide the knights that were out in the world uh, to places that needed protection. You know that, um, however, an interesting note as you're sort of thinking through what Bruce told you, he never told you a location. Told you the name, and but he never like pinpointed it on a map or told you where in the world it was. It was he just told you that that, that it existed. Um, during a night of Galaris, the fort was attacked, and Bruce himself was not at the fort at the time. And even he, you could tell at the time there was almost frustration in how confusing the stories and reports were. There were reports of every type of planar being like to the point that bruce even questioned the truth of it the like apparently there were devils and demons working in hand with fey and celestial and every type of almost like every planar creature was as was working against them um and in one fell swoop the fort was collapsed and they lost their archivists and um their items that allowed them to detect for what you would have been told about that, Bruce would have always ended that if you ever asked what happened afterwards or pressed about it. They always said that the Iris Knights had become very lost since that, enc since that encounter. And you knew that there wasn't one central organization anymore, that it was, like you said, there's sects and there's, fo there's forts all over that still, still run the banner and still fight the good fight, but there's it's a lot harder now for them to keep that running communication um but you you don't know anything modern or like current um but these days uh after after the battle and after everything was lost those of us that anoint feel it's hard to describe but uh the deepest darkest sadness I have ever felt in my life. It is like a black hole in the center of my chest. The loss of the heart of our order. Every night feels it. And when we use our abilities too often, the shadow, and he again shows you his, his arm and you see the almost fading now as again you see these ones uh receding i am surprised bruce would not have told you about this because once you anoint you will have to either learn how to create or there are places that you can buy uh, the the tincture and he shows again that bottle that he has on a chain around his neck this allows us to fight back it is not permanent and Unfortunately, many knights that anoint and take up the cause eventually die to the, the shadow itself. 
no um i wasn't told anything of the uh shadowing as you call it i you would pick up a bit of disappointment almost not like disappointment like uh an older being disappointment but almost like somebody they looked up to they're like very very shocked that it's almost cruel to have like not told you this and let you get this far down the line almost that sort of look i suppose I suppose maybe it was an aspect of hope. Maybe the next generation of virus knights would be able to avoid the affliction. I I never saw Bruce dealing with any clear signs or taking any concoctions himself, but I suppose that's just out of fear of or maybe even fear that upon learning what could happen to me, I might leave the order. Obviously, I, I wouldn't have. Understanding this does fill me with a little bit of anxiety, yes, but the he, things that the order stand for are more important than that. And he, he sighs and nods and he says, no, that is why the old fool should have told you the truth. They probably hid there. I understand that it might have been out of care, but I cannot shake myself to agree with it. They, mm. as you're sort of beginning to respond, there's almost like another rumble further in the distance that they prick their ear to. And they... Do you, sorry, they do, back. Do, do you know what's happening? These, these shakes have been happening for a few days now oh, yes. i the, see you've managed do do, do not worry uh, the uh current uh prime minister ala moonshadow has um hired me to deal with there, there are some zones in the area uh, and you would recognize that was the creature they are gem eating earth monsters basically they only care about devouring gems and uh he would just they they are they crop up every now and again. They are quite a common issue around the Zikar. Uh, they they especially like it. Of um, course, yeah, they put like gravitated towards it. It's, they it's, it's, it's energy. They're moving through the earth causes the earthquakes. Uh, from the sounds of that, there is one more. But I I have the energy. Do not worry. Um, well, um, please do not let me um, halt you any further in your in your job. Um, he says um, the. My, I need to. I will be out of the city for a few more days, but uh, on the final day of the festival, we are my, me and my my group. They are still currently hunting, and again, it sort of takes another glance out towards the where the rumble was. Um, we will be back in the city. Um, we usually uh, just stay at the bloody banner, though we might find something quieter with the with the festival, but um. You are welcome to come and uh, eat and drink with us. Uh, oh, wonderful. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, myself and my compatriots um, are also staying at the Bloody Banner currently. We are currently staying at the Bloody We haven't moved. No, we you, moved to the, you moved. We've moved. We moved to the Rusty Bucket. Yeah. Um, I, I am familiar of where the Rusty Banner is. Um, my compatriots and I were there at one point. <laughs> the, bloody but... the bloody banner. You said the rusty banner. <laughs> the rusty banner. <laughs> <laughs> no, that that, that old no, chestnut, that place over great. there. Yeah, I, I know um, what you're talking about, my guy. But he's like, I... um, uh, so yes, if, if uh, no pressure, I understand if you have, if you need to leave to continue your quest. But uh, if you have any questions or if you need any assistance, uh, of course, I'm. My, my before own. you do leave, uh, how many are in your current troop? Uh, we only have two. Uh, I I am the only uh, knight. We, however, have uh, an alchemist and a priest that travels with us. Um, I myself have two squires, so the, the the five of us in total. But we are we are the members of uh, of our fort that uh, travel. Uh, our fort. Uh, if you are traveling northwards, you you should uh, visit in uh, maybe there as well. Uh, of Fort Askar, uh, A S K A R. 
A S K A R. Um, and they would roll. They would very hastily sort of roll out a map. Actually, no, they would probably draw it on on in in move it in the and they would sort of place two rocks and you say if the Mornell Peaks are are here, uh, there is the mountain range up in this area at the very top of the peaks. So if again, I'll move you quickly onto. Right on the edge of the of the wastelands to the north. Our fort is situated just on the coastline, between the coastline and the mountains. You cannot miss it. It's, it is the only only building up in that area. Um, if you happen to be traveling through there, uh, feel free to use my name and um, my old master, um, Ergon. Uh, that's E R R G O N. Um, he he knew Bruce fairly well. Uh, if maybe even has some stories for you. Thank you very much. Um, I will. Again, so, as as you're so again as you're saying this, the the earth sort of rumbles again, yeah. and they they stand and they. Uh, they click, and uh, you would know, see them casting a uh, summon, a uh, fine steed, as they summon in their own. Uh, you see, they summon a war horse, um, a completely so it's an almost completely white uh, war horse with a black mane and uh, black tail, and almost with like cloud, uh, you know, like the back and neck and mane area. Is all like cloudy gray, like almost like ink spilling into white, um, as they mount and see, till we see till we meet again, Ichi. Yes, till we meet again, uh, Sarata. They will nod and begin riding off in in. You, you see them heading straight out towards the the source of the rumblings which you can tell like you were getting aftershock tremors like he, he's going to be going a good distance yeah. um it's not just over the next ridge um he just kind of like watches for a minute like almost in awe kind of like of finally seeing another another night right and they'll hop back onto the elk, turn it. Okay. Let's go. And you begin making the long journey back into the city. This is the end of part one. Part two airs Sunday, 7 p.m. GMT, or will be linked in the top right of your screen now. Thank you for watching, and roll well.